Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Look at this segment coming up. We're making such a difference. Um, so one of the great ways to support the show is go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can submit articles like this by Crafty Geek. Crafty, thank you so much. You've been supporting the show for a long time, uh, and I really appreciate it. Banks are opting out of the government's PPP loan forgiveness process. This was in The Intercept, which that's eh, they've gone a little more corporate media for my taste, but they still, everyone's, you know, they still have some good reporters on staff. I think the leadership there might, whatever, but they still got some good reporters doing some good stories. Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase and PNC have all passed on an SBA policy that would allow small business owners some relief. I am shocked that banks are, are going to stick it to people that were supposed to get help with. They got tax dollars that <laughs> I'm, we're going to get into it. I'm shocked leaving their small business customers with no other recourse if the banks refuse to forgive loans or drag out the process. See, this is what they're doing. They're op opting out of the government loan forgiveness process. So small business customers will now have no recourse if the banks refuse to forgive loans or drag out the process. As they said at the top, who are the big winners? Bank of America, JP Morgan, Chase, and PNC have all decided to opt out according to emails shared with the intercept. Now this is the thing and we're going to get I'm going to show you in a second. But this is again when when the first CARES Act came and I said be careful. I mean if you need a loan, you need a PPP loan, if you really need to keep your business open, that's great, but read the fine print. Well, this is some of the fine print they probably didn't even allow us to see. Right? Is they gave the banks a chance to opt out of the forgiveness program. Because banks haven't made out, they haven't made enough profit yet. As of the end of May, J.P. Morgan Chase was the top PPP lender, followed by Bank of America in the number two spot. PNC is number eleven. The banks, thanks to both parties and the federal government, Republicans and Democrats, remember the first CARES Act was passed while Trump was in office, and the Senate was Republican, but the Congress was still blue. These these uh, subsequent, since Biden has been elected. And the Senate is now Democrat. It's now all Democrats. But I just want to show you, both parties don't give a shit about you at all. Banks were incentivized to issue PPP loans through the fees they generated, but they didn't receive any fees to push forgiveness through. Oh, they weren't paid to do forgiveness. And they've dragged their feet. So not only do we have some, some uh, banks just opting out, of the total PPP loans that have been issued, less than half have been forgiven thus far. So even the banks, they're still not in a rush to forgive your loan because they don't get any extra fees because these banks don't get enough. They haven't gotten enough. They got trillions of dollars and they make interest off everything. They're not even using their own capital for these loans. And they're forcing people to sign up and they're making money hand over fist and all these other ways. But we don't want to forgive loans. And again, it's not their money. They're not forgiving their money. They just, they want to keep federal money. I mean, it's part of its tax dollars, but to be truth, truth be told, a lot of it was just printed out of thin air because we have a federal reserve that is based in a fiat currency. When Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971, our currency became worth nothing. So now the Federal Reserve can just print, and that's what it's done in the last year and a half. I think I don't even know what the number is now. It's probably with this new infrastructure bill, it's probably north of $10 trillion. I don't know. They're just printing it. It's a casino. They're just printing money. Um, but since so just to be clear, the Federal Reserve printed trillions of dollars, gave a lot of it to the banks, probably hundreds of billions of dollars, maybe in the trillion range. So it's not the bank's money. And they said, you got to forgive most of these loans, turning them effectively into grants because the everything got shut down, as we know, because of the pandemic. So now they want to keep money that was free, that was given to them by the federal government, by both political parties, which are utterly corrupt. If you think Trump was somehow better than Biden or Biden's better than Trump, you're a sucker. You're a sucker. That's okay. We've all been lied to. We all thought this party was better than that party at some point in our lives. It's okay. Wake up to the fact that 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 that's not the truth. And now they don't want to forgive them. So in addition to the, and now there's banks that are opting out. So they're just flat out saying, we don't have to. The ones that, ha that have to are just taking their sweet time. 
in late July that uh, it would offer small business owners who took out a PPP loans of $150,000 or less a way to bypass intransigent banks and seek forgiveness directly from the agency. Okay, that sounds good on paper, right? So if the banks are dragging their feet, you can go right to the SBA and say, hey, what do I, what paperwork do I need to fill out to get this loan forgiven? Which would be great. That would also infuse a lot of money right into the economy because people took, I took an SBA loan. I'm glad that I did. If I didn't have the SBA loan, when I got demonetized by YouTube, I would have been screwed. I didn't keep any of the money for myself. I did everything they told me to do. I paid back uh, past invoices and I uh, rehired staff that I had to let go, right? But there was a fine print in the SBA's recent announcement that many may have missed. Banks actually have to opt into the direct process for small business owners to access it. Access it, access it, access it, right? And we just read you the list of the banks that are like, haven't done it. The two, the one and two, JP Morgan and Bank of America, the number one and two and the 11th bank, PNC, have all said no. So you thought you were going to get these loans forgiven? Well, turns out no. And you better believe that a Federal Reserve run by Janet Yellen, who was paid somewhere in the neighborhood of $1.7 million in speaking fees to the banks. The banks didn't hire Janet Yellen. to she, The banks don't need Janet Yellen to educate. They were like, oh, wow, she educated us on how the banking system worked. They were paying for her favor. Just like all the politicians in Congress and the Senate, they're Democrats and Republicans who get money from the banks so that this law is passed. That's why the CARES Act was designed to screw regular people over and small business owners. Let's go back to this dollar amount, $150,000 or less. That's small business owners. Big business owners just get it forgiven probably. But they know that if you're a small business with a, with a loan of 150 grand or less, 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 75 grand, that's a lot of money to a small business. And you thought you weren't going to have to pay that back. And now you do. That's going to put a drain on your business because they don't care. They want you to go out of business so that the big billionaire corporations can buy this up. I told you this is, they're going to do this with your home. They're going to do this with your small business. I said this a year and a half ago. So I want to bring um, Ron Placone in here to discuss this. Uh, so Ron, I mean, shocked shocked that the government let has letting the bank screw people over again. <laughs> I mean, who saw this coming? Graham, um, I, I think they're just encouraging the small businesses to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Really, they're giving them an opportunity. I mean, everything's fine right now. The, the world is totally back to normal and everything's good. Yep. So we should really be thankful for this. Let's give these small businesses some credit, really. Uh, not credit like credit in the bank sense, credit, like pat on the back, like, Hey, this is an opportunity for you to uh, stay underwater. Basically. What, I, what an opportunity people were tweeting stuff like that at me, by the way, when I, I tweeted out something like, yeah, they, they just ended unemployment benefits during a pandemic on a day we're supposed to be celebrating labor. And, and people responded. They were like, maybe people, I mean, everything's fine now. We, we have to end it. And people are just, it's an opportunity for people. <laughs> But no, this is part of that theme where literally the entire of the past 18 months, there's been this obscene upward transfer of wealth. And then they say to the banks, hey, yeah, and you're going to forgive these loans, right? No. Okay, well, here's the money anyway. Don't worry about it. Hey, airlines, uh, we'll give you all this money. You're not going to lay everybody anybody off, right? No, fuck you. We're going to lay people off. Uh, okay, here it is anyway. Uh, hey, Wall Street, you're not going to. Yeah, no, we're, we're just going to do whatever we want. Hey, are, you're going to distribute this to everyone else, right? Yeah, sure. We'll distribute it. Okay. Well, here it is. We have a corporate coup for a government. It benefits the elite, the donor class of the 1%. That's it. The rules are skewed to fit them. They have gotten everything they wanted. Billionaires have gotten richer. This is neo-feudalism. This is a corporate coup. This is a, this is a failed state. This is an empire. The war machine's gotten richer. Everybody else is suffering. The quality of life is diminishing and diminishing while Jeff Bezos is playing around his penis rocket. 
uh, this country is a fucking failed scam. Um, I don't know, Ron. I think America is pretty amazing. Uh, I think we've got, <laughs> no, I mean, it's just like, I don't know what to do other than be sarcastic because not only is this, this looming thing that I just learned about, but uh, everybody's unemployment just ended, as you just pointed out, not to mention the eviction moratorium has ended, ended. now. It's yeah. Ended. The Supreme court ended it. Supreme court ended it. So, gee, this doesn't seem like the convergence of a perfect storm of a complete economic collapse at all. Small businesses aren't going to, you know, I can't give their loans forgiven. Uh, people are getting evicted from their homes. People are losing unemployment and Oh, guess what? They thought, the, the the new job statistics just came out last week and the and the Biden administration and Congress and everybody else was hoping for about 700 some thousand new jobs because we're opening back up no we're not opening back up because we have a low vaccination rate we have actually back to people not going to businesses people whatever afraid to go out the ticket sale we canceled the well, tour and new variants are happening new variants There's are an, happening. another one now and so, yeah, I mean, this is and I don't know, maybe, maybe the vaccine would have worked against the variant. I don't know. I'm not, that's not my well, field. They of don't even know yet. I mean, they as don't far know. as I know, like they don't, I mean, some of the newer, like it's a uh, view or something like that. That's like the newest one. Like they don't so, even know if it works against that. It's nobody knows. And so uh, maybe even if we had a 90% vaccination rate in this country, we would still have these variants and people would still be hospitalized. I don't know, but hospitals are filling up. I know that's a fact. And the majority of the people in the hospitals are unvaccinated. So that's a fact. What this new variant does, we don't know. Um, maybe vaccinated people are going to go to the hospital now. We don't know. So that means we're going to have to what? Go back to shutting stuff down or limited stuff? I mean, uh, I've been living in a state uh, that just went back to 50% capacity indoors. Um, they were at 70, they started to get to hundred percent capacity. Now they're back to 50% capacity. So again, the businesses that are open cannot function or cannot bring in as much revenue. So, and I'm guessing some of these businesses have SBA loans of $150,000 or less. And boy, it sure would be nice if they could just forgive that loan that the banks gave that were given that money from the federal, the federal government rather gave the banks. So it's really like, I don't understand how, uh, unless I don't know, they want a financial collapse or there's they're, they're, they're praying for it so that they can just swoop in and buy up more stuff. Or they're just so short sighted in their greed that they don't care. Or this is like a collapse by design. I can't seem to figure out what it is because they're so, I mean, this is the kind of stuff. I mean, America is already on the brink of like civil war, but now you throw this economic thing back into the mix. So again, I want to go back to the job numbers. They they were planning on 750,000 new jobs. That didn't happen. It's only about 240,000. Yeah, like two yeah 200,000 jobs got created. So all of this, like we're opening up new jobs, go back to work, everybody. You don't need your, see, that'd be great if, the vet, the COVID if it was, was just about, safe and they paid living wages. That would also be great. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing people not wanting to go back to waiting tables. They mm -hmm. don't want to do it. You're seeing medical staff people quit in the last year because they were just like overrun. And now they're like, the hospitals are overrun with unvaccinated patients. So I don't want to do this. And, you know, some people have just decided to work online or work remotely. So what jobs were being created? We're, we're, we're talking about a 500,000 job shortfall based on their projections. And so, I mean, this is just the housing crisis that they keep kicking the can down the road with the eviction moratorium, which just ended. So this is all going to come to a head now, not to mention, oh, by the way, we wasted $3.5 trillion. Uh, four presidents from both political sp parties spent 20 years wasting $3.5 trillion to get rid of the Taliban and replace them with Taliban armed with American weapons. So that really worked out in Afghanistan. So Yeah, they had no entrance plan. They had no exit plan. Nothing. And this was just, uh, you know, I mean, when people call it a failure, of course, that is correct. But at the end of the day, they really met their agenda, though, because their agenda was padding the pockets of the military industrial complex and defense contractors for as long as they could. 
And that's exactly what they did. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, $3.5 trillion, how many lives lost? And it was all for oil and corruption. Yeah. I mean, you read the Afghanistan papers, which I'm, you know, the media that came out, what, a year and a half ago, the media talked about it for like a day or two. And all of this, all of this last couple of weeks of watching Afghanistan collapse, no mention by the corporate media about the Afghanistan papers, no mention of like, Hey, we saw this a year and a half ago that we've wasted, we've been wasting time and money there. Nothing got accomplished. Generals admitted, we don't know what we're doing there. No, the, they, the, they were beating the drums to stay. Yeah. The media was doing the opposite. I mean, first they sold that idea. Like it's about women's rights. And then people were like, that's absolutely ridiculous. So then they basically said that they accidentally said the quiet part out loud. And they're like, there's a bunch of minerals. We want their resources. CNN was publishing that a few days later because we have a pro-war media. Why? Well, because weapons contractors fund the media. So we have a pro-war media. When it comes to war, we are the most propagandized nation on earth. We got to be. We got to be, at least when it comes to war. So how do you see this shaking out with this, this PPP not being forgiven by the majority of the banks doing it and unemployment ending and the more and the eviction moratorium ending? How do you see this playing out? Well, I think people are going to lose their homes. I mean, that's already happening. And and there's some states where, you know, there's still uh, a moratorium in place. I mean, I know here in California, I don't think it expires until the end of, well, I think it might be the end of September. So I guess it might be coming up here, but I'm, I'm not sure the exact timeline on that. But, uh, and I think New York, to their credit, I think New York is is till January, I think. Don't quote me on that. But uh, mm -hmm. but but I know like some states, point being, some states have extended it, but, but yeah, like the moratorium overall is ending. And, you know, some states, they're already kicking people out swiftly. This will cause the virus to spread, among other things. Also, people are going to be housing insecure and people are already food insecure. I mean, yeah, this is a recipe for a huge, huge storm. And uh, speaking of storms, we already got some literal ones of those, too. So, yeah, this is like the plot of a apocalyptic movie i mean environmental disaster is coupled with a, a crashing uh society and a crumbling civilization uh the u.s is by all definitions a crumbling empire and we have a system that is set up to be a volley between neoliberalism and neo-fascism which means no one's gonna freaking help you we are literally on our own we have nobody except for each other that's just the bare, brutal reality of it. And um, I, I think it's going to get a lot worse for a while. I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope so bad that I'm wrong. Uh, most of the stuff I say, I hope I'm wrong, uh, to be honest. But um, but I, I think there's a good chance it, it could get bad for a pretty long time. Um, and again, I sincerely hope I'm wrong. I mean, there's... There's some, I mean, you got to think that they would want to do something to just keep the wheels turning. But I don't even know if we can give them that much credit at this point. I mean, I mean, never at any point. And it wasn't just when Trump was in charge. It's when Biden's in charge, too. It's both of them. It's both because they're both, Wall Street drafted both of them. Doesn't matter if they have an R or D next to their name. Wall Street drafted both of them. And every now and again, they do a Harlan Globetrotters game for us. That's all it is. That's all it freaking is. Yeah. And never at any point, never did they pay people to stay home. Never, never no. did it happen. And it's never going to at this point. It should. It should right now. But it's never going to. Um, they're just never going to do it at this point. So now people are just straight up in survival mode. Any rational person who lives in the United States should never, ever look at this country the same way again. I know I can't. I will never, ever look. And, and by the way, this is someone who has had a very low opinion. It's not like I was freaking wearing a United States flag before this. <laughs> like, I was pretty, I mean, I, I had a pretty low opinion 
of this place in the first place. I mean, I'm a lefty living in the United States. Being a lefty in the United States, that's like being a surfer in Nebraska and your only way to the ocean is by walking. That's what it's like being a lefty in the United States. So I know how that is. A lot of people watching, we all know how that is. But this, the past 18 months, just as far as how we are as a society, uh, the point of reference and the conversations that are even permitted when it comes to anything, the uh, brutal tribalism that we have on every level, the complete corporate coup for a government that's going unchecked, the apologia you see for this complete uh, abortion of a system that needed to end yesterday. No one should ever look at this place the same way again. And, you know, I mean, you know, my wife and I have had conversations about, you know, do we want to have kids? I don't know if we want to have kids or not. We're both undecided. But the one thing I am militantly decided on, if we do, we will have to move. I will not raise them here. I won't do it. I will not raise them in the United States. And it breaks my heart that I feel that way about the place where I grew up. The only home I've ever known. I would not raise a kid in this country. I would not do it. I'm not judging anyone else. I'm not judging anyone else. Tons of my friends are having kids. All power to them. This is just my opinion. This is just my take on things. No one has to live that out but me. But I couldn't do it. Yeah, I I uh, I, I agree. I'm, I'm not going to have kids or anything, but I, I, I wouldn't want to raise kids here. I worry about my nieces and nephews. Um, I wish I could just move them all out of this country. Um, but yeah, I mean, America, it just keeps getting worse. And any shred of like, America's not perfect, but it's still the best. Pl you know, I used to kind of no, think it's that. I, I, it's, it's still, it's not true at all. It's not, it's not the best place. It's an awful and place. All the, I mean, and there's no hope like, for it. Yeah. And, and people who, I mean, I, I have those where they're just like, well, tell me where utopia is. I'll meet you there. There is no utopia, but there's fucking better, dude. There's fucking better. And I'm sorry. Whatever someone else will name somewhere better than the United States. They don't actually want you to answer that question because when you start naming countries, they get pissed off. Yeah. Whatever. They're like, well, we're somewhere better. And you're like uh, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Canada. Like you start anywhere in the EU. That's 20. Costa Rica. That's, yeah. Right. Australia. <laughs> I mean, New, New Zealand. Uh, where else? Where else could we go? England, Russia. Scotland. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's like, come on. Like there's a long list. There's a long freaking list of countries that are better than the United States. And, you know, yeah, there is no utopia. That's not a thing. But but it's like, I mean, that's like saying like, hey, here's a piece of shit. Eat it. I don't want to eat a piece of shit. Well, show me the perfect meal. <laughs> I don't know if there is a perfect meal, but <laughs> there's not, better yeah, than a piece of shit. There's better, better than, than that. Yeah, America is an abusive house, a household. This is what abusers say. You can't do better than me. This is what abusers say. Like, and and it just like, and I would say like, name another, but I always, it's fine, stay. I don't care. Like anyone that argues with me about a personal choice, oh, Graham, Bitcoin is fun. Don't buy it. I don't give a fuck. I have a bunch of it. I'm going to be a crypto millionaire and you can suck my digital dick. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, um, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Whatever, don't do it. I don't care. Stay in America. It's so America's amazing. Get a fucking. And you know American what? Movie. I freaking love my neighborhood, so I really don't want to leave. <laughs> like yeah. I really do. I love my freaking neighborhood, and I really want to stay here. I really do. I like. I like the weather in California. I love my neighborhood. I, I yeah. wanna. I really wanna. Well, I don't believe it, but I really hope that I end up being wrong, and things do turn around. I, I really, and I'm going to do everything in my power to try to make that happen. I'm, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying, but you know, you got to be a little realistic too. And, and it's like, yeah, I think this could get a lot worse before it gets better and it might not get better. That's just no. the reality. Yeah. And again, you know, yeah. if it's just my wife and I, where it's like, you know, we're okay and we're safe, you know, I, I'd be willing to weather the storm, see what happens. But you bring a kid into that scenario, that's a dice I'm not really willing to roll because that kid has to come first. So I'm not yeah. willing to roll that dice for that kid. A kid's involved. We're out. We are out. 
If it's just us, all right, let's see what happens. You know, we'll make a decision to get, but if kids involved, we got to go because that kid's got to come first. Yeah. I don't want to raise a kid in the hunger games. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right, everybody, go see Ron and I in San Francisco, September 11th, Sacramento, September 12th, Burbank, September 15th, and Lee Camp and I doing Government Secrets Live in Los Angeles, September 18th. Those tickets are at GrahamElwood.com or RonPlacone.com. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Hey, everybody, Ron Placone and I had to cancel all of our October tour dates because of uh, COVID, the Delta variant, all that, but we still have shows in california ron and i are doing san francisco september 11th sacramento september 12th burbank september 15th and lee camp and i are doing live government secrets september 18th in los angeles all those tour dates are at GrahamElwood.com. all of the venues are requiring proof of vaccination dynasty typewriter on the 18th is also saying you can do negative COVID tests but check with the venues for what their policies are i have no control over those policies go to GrahamElwood.com. sorry we can't come this sucks we'll be back hopefully next year but if you're in california or want to make the trip come out to these shows these are probably the only shows we're going to do this year thank you <laughs>